Welcome back to Hazelnuts. On this episode, there's an awful lot more grinding, a hell of a lot more welding, and... Get the hammer, go! Get the hammer, go! Go, get the hammer, go! As you can see in front of you, we have a pile of Tesla large drive units, don't we, Nicholas? We do. We have an empty one, a performance one, and a normal one. And the difference is that the performance ones probably push about 600, 600. 600, 650 brake horsepower. And then the base ones, which look very similar, they have a different inverter fitted, and they push about 400 brake horsepower. So still like 1,050 combined. If we can build a battery pack that actually can output that much power. Now, the performance is going in the rear. Correct. So we need to build up this whole subframe today. Yep. And mount that in here with the motor, the arms, everything. So full dry fit is what I'm thinking. Yep. In it goes. And then Carl L has basically done a load more CAD work again, designed the mounts to go into here for us to put the base large drive unit into here, but it's going to be running in reverse. And then we're going to hopefully get that in the front and see how that fits. And then? And then we're going to strip everything apart, yep. probably off camera, and make everything pretty, finish the bits of welding, make it all good, so then we can, in theory, get everything fitted properly in a future episode and get it rolling. We better get going then, aren't we? We better get going. The big question we do have, though, is have we mounted this in the right place? And when we get those wheels on, are they actually going to be in the middle? By eye, it looks good. That is the big concern. So you'll have to watch the episode and find out. Let's go. This is the front of the T5 subframe. And as you can see on the screen right now, there is a load of CAD floating around that Car L, who's just there, has done. Uh, and this is what it's come out like. So what have you done? Made a taco. You made a taco. And what was this made with? So we cut it on the swift cut, the plasma, and then we folded it with a Tesla bend brake press. Um, and hopefully it's all just going to fit nicely. Just fit on there like that. And then there's some plates that go here with a piece of tube through, which the piece of tube is too long. There's some other bits here that go but I've on. been told better to be too long than too short. Look. Fits on CAD, as Carl's just said. The classic. Yeah. <laughs> and these go on there like that, and then the motor drops in here. So what are you going to do now, Nick? I'm going to clean up the areas around where these need to be welded. So I'll just clean up all these areas. And then I think we're going to what, bolt the lobes to the motor, offer the motor up, and then we'll weld it all in place with the motor in the position we want. Right, I'll leave you to it. By eye. No, Nick, not by eye. That has not done us any favours, as we're going to find out later on in this episode. Anyway, cleans up the surface with a flappy paddle to get rid of all the old paint, ready for him to start welding those brackets on. So everything is now led out on the floor. Carl has led it all out, haven't you, Carl? I have, like a giant jigsaw puzzle. It really and is. I have no idea where most of the bits go. But the arms are the same both sides. The hubs are different. This subframe is broken here. The other new subframe we've got is broken on a lower tab. Joys of aluminium. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, fatigues over time, especially when you've got 600 brake horsepower in it. So Carl's now gonna assemble this together uh, and then we're gonna try and get it fitted into the bottom of the van. And then there's that moment of truth for you, Carl. Yeah, does it or does it not line up with the center of the wheel arch, which I'm very nervous about, <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> He's been sweating for days about this, but we'll see very soon whether it actually lines up and our by eye measurements. By eye! By eye are actually right. Taking full advantage of our mock-up motor from Felton, we decided to bolt the brackets to it, float it in place, tack them all in, so we then knew once it was welded up fully, it would definitely fit back in the subframe. If we go back a little bit look, off that edge, I'll just put a tack up in the top of it. Put my finger in there, so just put it where you want it and I can hold it. Just hold it there. Mm, down a bit more. Stop. Mm, it's going to only double check in. Let's see how this works. Shouting about tight tolerances and by eye. Look at that. Right, it's too high this side. There. More -ish, sure. Tack that one and then scoot and this And then we'll scoot this one around because these, these will move a bit, won't they? Oh, so we got we got up to seven and a half degree movement on the motor and it will still do all its oil and stuff properly. Okay. 
you want to measure it? With what? A tape measure. And one. So I think if you come in from the bottom and you measure from that to there. It's all different widths, if that's the so, same as there. That, yeah, 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 that's what I was thinking. That's like a flat edge. I think they're all right. Have we got a better tape measure that actually has the lower markings on this point here, the bit that I need? We'll push the tape measure Look, further. I need this piece here, but I don't have all the little markings. Oh, that's been well used over the years, all right? What happened to the Minotaur that Dad bought? Whatever it was called. Probably lost it. One, two, three. Oh, this is 94, that's 93. You're a millimetre out, about there. Up a tad more. About there. Shut your eyes. Like putting this on in the right way. Are you doing it backwards? Yes. Idiot. You have one job, eh? <laughs> not even. <laughs> no, it's <exactly> not <laughs> at any not stretch. Close to <laughs> no. You got it the wrong way round. Definitely, definitely the wrong way round. The front one, you might get the right way round. <laughs> yeah, that's what it does. <laughs> <laughs> hey, piss off, you two. <laughs> I don't normally get his hands dirty. I mean, well, he's wearing gloves anyway at the minute. But... If you put a couple of tacks on, we can lift the motor out then. Lift the motor out, and we'll have to flip this so we can weld everywhere else, and then job would be good. This thing's so fucking dirty. Well, you've got a new one, haven't we? Yeah. You just don't want to peel the nice... So we've got a nice new one from our tech, and instead of Nick using the nice new one, he's still keeping the old one going. Well, that's because what? I don't want to pull the nice fancy covers off it and then it'll get dirty. The whole then... point is to use it. Yeah, all right. Maybe I'll use it. Next time. I need to put the earth on because otherwise it would just... Oh, it is on. Oh, it's good. <laughs> Chris, so this is okay here, yeah? Because you had a question about this. This is okay? Yeah, we've actually got more room than I thought. Okay. I thought it was down further, so we can All do right. a straight connector on there. Well, I was just checking before I welded this on. Yeah, no, we're good. We're good. It's nearly the moment of truth. Will it actually line up? Stop just before I hit. Like, there? Yeah. The CAD model did not have an anti-roll bar in. I, yeah. <laughs> it definitely but didn't have an anti-roll bar in the it. CAD model. <laughs> right, let's go up again. There we go. There we go. Easy. <laughs> what, up, you go down? Yeah, if you want to go down, but you need to go up first. Health and safety, just like these pallets. Now that's getting bolted in. Before we show you if it lines up, let's get this front subframe finished. Welding, welding, and even more welding, as I know you lot watching this love a bit of welding. If you do, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. But do not do what Nick does. Do not weld in a short and t-shirt. It's a stupid idea. Well, it's the same out both sides. Oh, it's just... moving back. No, it actually is moving back. So the Tesla have got those weird things on that lower bit. That's actually all right. I reckon that's right. Look at the plate in it. What's that plate in? It's the, so there's these weird little stand-up bits. So on the skyline, when you used to accelerate, you used to put your foot down, it used to shift the whole set of wheels back. It's to do when it squats to make it grip. So when you used to do the tracking on the wheels, it was a nightmare because that little lower arm. Well, it's actually swung back arm. a bit. I don't think it's actually that bad. That side hasn't moved back as much. <laughs> At the frame to the subframe, that is fucking straight as an arrow. Yeah, that is, but it's not here. Right, well, we didn't buy eye that bit. We did. When? Because we buy eye how far this bit pushed into here. No, I wasn't involved in that. You welded it? Nope. <laughs> Nick might not be far off, Tim. It's 20 mil. <laughs> 10 mil. 
Sorry, are we, are we... On this side, remember? I the, told 10 yeah, mil. the other side, though, is definitely not 10 mil. It's the side I was looking at. 10 mil. This side is definitely not 10 mil. 12.5. Yeah, this side's definitely a considerable amount more. So what if we do, we need to do some sort of slot. So we're both right. Yeah, we're both right, there we go. We need to do some sort of slot that allows up to 20 mil of movement backwards. Please help me. Please help me. Let us know in the comments what you think we should do. Leave it as it is. It's clearly, it. tolerance by eye is not quite right. About is not quite right. About this, about that. Anyway, hole <laughs> drill, 40 mil hole, big old slot. We can get it to where we need to get it to. Job done. Sounds a good job for you. Finished. Sounds like a cold problem. Gently, okay? That's what normally happens. Straight down, right. Down tad. Get hammers. Smash it. Smash it with a hammer. Hammer time. Hammer's Hulk Hulk smash? Hammer. Yeah. Carl, hammer. Get the hammer, Carl. Get the hammer, Carl. Carl, get the hammer, Carl. It's easy. Works every time. Hammers never break, do they? Pretty cool down there, actually, doesn't it, Nick? What? Just seeing that whole back end of a Tesla in there. Yeah, that's good. What are we on? We're on the subframe. Oh. Yeah. Stop. There we go. You need to make sure the struts, before we tighten any of this, that the struts are lined up as well. Because my strut is wiggling around in its space. <laughs> no, this one's wedged, is it? Does it need a flying kick? This one's floating around in its space as well. <laughs> Go on, jack her up. I think we've had a fairly successful episode. It has been successful-ish. Ish, yeah. It's had its problems like it has. every episode. So the front motor is now in. There's loads of room in here. Way more than I think we thought we'd have. Oh yeah, it's massive. And all the weight is low down, which is very, very good. So we've got to get drive shafts sorted, which is one big thing. So we need to find someone to make us drive shafts. If anyone in the comments knows, let us know. Um, but that's in, that's all welded. We're gonna have to drop it out at some point, paint it all, make it all pretty. Yep. Uh, we've got to do some other bits inside, haven't we, Nick? Yeah, so inside here, we need to lose the clutch pedal. Yep. The throttle pedal is obviously usable because it's linked to this like helipot here, which we can use with the AM uh, fl system. Fly by wire, six, yep. six outputs. So we can use that, it's a dual hall. And then you want to change this, don't you? you well, don't I want think to use it. we need to put the iBooster in because I don't think the original van one's going to have enough go in it when you've got like, four pot brakes. We will have everywhere. regen though. We will, but I think putting a decent iBooster in that has a lot more power just in case the regen doesn't work at some point. We'll try an iBooster. But we, so we, because we've got a big motor in the front, we can have really good regen. The chance are we'll hardly need the brake pedal at all. But, but it's there if we need it. it and obviously you want to put a hydro hammer. And especially when we're towing, towing the van, this van towing another van whilst racing a van. Is that what you want to do? I really want to do that. Like the Tesla Cybertruck was towing a Porsche whilst racing a Porsche. Yep. I think this with another T5 on the back of it, racing a T5 would be quite comical. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> And then obviously the back, we've got our frame in. Ta-da! This is where the problem went though, isn't it? Yeah, so we've got a couple of little minor issues. Uh, one, the anti-roll bar is not in because mm -hmm. the models we had didn't have the anti-roll bar on it. It actually comes across here, which is really annoying. So, But we do need to move this back a bit. So the plan is to, where we put the pucks, we're going to drill the pucks out with a 40 mil so we can bring this back further and then re-bolt it, which might give us space for the anti-roll bar. But worst case, we can put an anti-roll bar across the top of here. Or we can notch that leg slightly for the yeah. anti-roll bar yeah. and weld a plate back in there if we needed to. So all is not lost and it is in and it is functional. We just need to make some small adjustments. This by eye thing and that will do and around about... Has sort of worked. <laughs> well, don't use those measurements or those tolerances because now we're doing it again. 
we are doing it again. Luckily, we're not doing all of it again. We're just going to do that modification. And once that's done, we'll line up everything, make sure it's right. And then we've got to move into the next stage, which is, well, cleaning up everything else in the van. As you said, sorting out brake and all that stuff. And then working out what we are doing battery pack wise. Battery pack wise is a big thing. Obviously, we're going to have to build a full lumen for the vehicle, which is yeah. get some help in on that because I'm not a loom person. And why is battery pack such a big deal? Well, just because we've got these big, powerful motors, if you don't have enough fuel going to them as such, you're not going to get all that power. So we realistically need to run two ID3 packs or something because we're potentially going to be pulling nearly 2,000 amps out of this thing. Now, each one of those packs is good for about 1,200. So yeah. the ideal world, it'd be two ID3 packs. The issue is they're bloody expensive. So maybe run one pack for now and then add another pack. I don't know. We need to work out if we can afford to throw a rather expensive battery setup in this thing or not. Well, we're going to have to make it capable of it. We really are. We'll figure it out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done already, make sure you hit subscribe. And like the video. Don't forget the like. It's and important. we'll see you again next time.